I will be the first to acknowledge that mainstream anime and manga never strive to be too different from what's come before it. It makes sense. In the world we live in, the best investments are those we know are likely to be successful. Which is why when it comes to Hollywood, we get sequels and remakes. And when it comes to anime, we get derivative and formulaic. This is particularly notable when it comes to specific genres of the medium, like Battle Shonen, Echi, and Isekai. It's Sword Art Online that's often credited with the rise of the genre. And as quickly as it rose, so too did questions of its quality. To many, it took some of the worst parts of related genres and mashed them into one. This, in isolation, wasn't that big of an issue. SAO was but one work. The problem was that SAO was incredibly popular, and like all things popular, it had its copycats. And while some series have been able to rise above the Isekai genre, like Konosuba and No Game No Life, for the most part, the genre is considered low quality. Now, let's talk Shield Hero. It starts as all Isekai do, with the main character getting sucked into a fantasy world, and he quickly finds himself to be a legendary hero. But he realizes that the king seems to have a problem with him. Clearly, there's something off here. And then we get Mine's false sexual assault allegation. Afterwards, Naofumi loses everything, is nearly outcasted, and must save a world that despises him if he ever wants to go home. Things only get better with episode 2, when we meet Raftalia, a slave that Naofumi buys to make up for the fact that he lacks the ability to attack. And after killing their first monster together, she agrees to help him so that kids like her won't have to suffer anymore. The first two episodes of Shield Hero are great. The world is generic, and the end goal is basic, but the two leads are more than enough to carry the story. Seeing how a pariah and an orphan slave bond in a world where everything is against them is a great story. But it all fell apart when I saw episode 3, where Raftalia swears her undying loyalty. It was so incredibly rushed. An arc that should have lasted the entire series. A story of two hurt individuals learning to trust one another, wasted. Oh, and she's an adult now. And she's in love with him. It only gets worse when after having her slave crest removed, she has a place back on as a quote, symbol of his faith in her. I knew that the series had doomed the most interesting arc it could have had. The cartoonish villainy of the royal family is only outdone by the cartoonish stupidity of the other heroes. Nalfami is one of the few competent people in the show. And the decision to age up Raftalia by the end of her introductory episode was jarring. But Lolicon fans don't need to worry because it's only a few episodes later that she's replaced by Philo. And by this point, it's incredibly clear what Shield Hero is. Another power fantasy with a can't do wrong protagonist and his harem. It took me a while to accept Shield Hero for what it was. I ultimately finished season 1 with little satisfaction. But with season 2's slow start, cut content, and poor animation, I can firmly say that I'm out for good. And it is frustrating. Shield Hero, not entirely unlike SAO a decade ago, had set itself up to be something truly unique in a giant sea of mediocrity. And to see it revert back to the same tired tropes that were old a decade ago is truly disappointing. But I'm just one guy. Maybe I'm wrong. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It really helps me out. And I'll see you guys next time.